November of 2006, the Wii would be released, and shortly afterwards, one of the greatest games Nintendo's ever made would come out. Super Mario Galaxy, while not a perfect game, was and still is one of the most innovative projects to ever be brought to light by Nintendo. You see, ever since the 80s, it's no secret that Nintendo has used Mario as a way of raising the bar in the video game industry. In 1985, Super Mario Bros. set the precedent for what a 2D platformer should be. In 1996, Super Mario 64 set the bar for what a 3D game should entail. But in 2007, Super Mario Galaxy proved that a game game like Mario could actually be transformed into an artistic masterpiece. Galaxy has a way of really capturing your attention, and at first glance, you may just think that this method of attention capturing is brought to fruition through the simple fact that you are going on this crazy adventure through space. But there are so many more details that contribute to this. The soundtrack is this beautiful orchestra, the cutscenes are grand and cinematic, the Comet Observatory, while empty, is filled with life. The characters have exigence, which can later be extracted through Rosalina's storybook, alongside the dialogue, but most importantly, the galaxies are diverse, big, and fun. So given the success that Super Mario Galaxy had, alongside the fact that Nintendo had way more ideas for galaxies that they couldn't fit in the first game, it was only logical for them to make a sequel. The only problem is that Super Mario Galaxy 2 abandoned so much of what made the original good. Now don't get me wrong, this game is great, and for the longest time I actually thought that it was better than the original because of the simple fact that it took Super Mario Galaxy and expanded upon both its mechanics alongside its gameplay. So basically, Super Mario Galaxy 2 is better than the first game, and people who say the first game is better, they're like, eh, the story's better. What story is there in the Mario game? You're just hooked to the nostalgia because it came out in 2007. The second game has more levels in it, okay? Okay? But the more I reflect on the Galaxy games, the more I realize that Super Mario Galaxy 2 could have been so much greater than what it is. So without further ado, I'm going to finally express why I believe Super Mario Galaxy 2 deserved better. When you first open up the game, you are met with this intro sequence in which Peach invites you to the castle in which she is inevitably kidnapped by Bowser. Not only is the sequence not an actual follow-up to the first game, but it's also just a lot lamer in comparison to the first. In Galaxy 1, you are met with the Star Festival, and when Bowser takes Peach, it's this whole ordeal. The dropping of the ship's anchors is dramatic, and we see Mario try his best to save Peach, but he fails and ends up on this small little galaxy. Mario then meets the Lumas and Rosalina, but of course that doesn't happen without some action beforehand, and before you know it, you're introduced to the Common Observatory, and you even get a bit of insight into Rosalina and the Lumas' backstory. But in Galaxy 2, it's like, okay, we got a cool little TD sequence. You run into a Luma, Bowser can have speech, and Okay, we're on the first star now. While the first game does all of this atmosphere crafting before even launching you into the game, Galaxy 2 basically takes the mindset of, okay, you play the first game, so we don't really give a fuck, we're just gonna launch you straight into the game. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand why a sequel to a game might not have as much atmosphere crafting in comparison to the prequel, because it's not necessarily introducing a new concept, but what bothers me is the fact that this sequence is not a continuation of the first game, nor does it pay any sort of homage towards it. Now, like I said, you get launched to the Common Observatory after collecting your first star in Super Mario Galaxy. As you collect more stars, you unlock more of the Common Observatory, and the different areas, whether it be the kitchen, terrace, bedroom, etc., act as worlds that house their respective galaxies. Not only is the Common Observatory relevant story-wise, but it's such a unique idea when it comes to both having a hub world, but also for progression's sake. Unlocking a new part of the Common Observatory is exciting, it gives you something to look forward to. But when you collect your first star in Super Mario Galaxy 2, you land on planet Mario, which is 
cool, but in comparison to the Comet Observatory, it's not that cool. Not to mention that Rosalina, who is quite literally half the reason why the story in Galaxy 1 was so good, is just not present in this game at all. So as you can imagine, Galaxy 2 does not have much story to it. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna play a Mario game for its story, but when Galaxy 1 actually had a story brewing, I can't help but see Galaxy 2's lack of story as a completely missed opportunity, and not including Rosalina is by far one of the worst decisions they could have ever made. Not to mention that Planet Mario does not have the same progression charm that Galaxy 1 and the Comet Observatory have, because you just go to the steering wheel and make your way from world to world, which is a perfectly fine way of doing things, but once again, I think most people would have loved to have the Comet Observatory, something similar to it, or even an expansion of the idea, because there's just so much more substance to it. Speaking of substance, let's talk about the galaxies. Now like I said, I and probably most people can agree that Galaxy 2 is stronger when it comes to both platforming alongside mechanics. Yoshi does add a lot of depth to the galaxies, not to mention that the power-ups they added, such as the cloud power-up and spin drill, are actually unique. While Galaxy 1 kind of mixes both linear and non-linear gameplay into its stars, Galaxy 2 definitely does lean into the more linear side of gameplay, especially with the inclusion of checkpoints, but I honestly don't mind this change. What I do mind though is how Galaxy 2 feels more like DLC to the prequel as opposed to its actual own game. When it comes to Galaxy 1, there are just so many iconic galaxies that everyone remembers, whether it be Toy Time, Gusty Garden, or even Honey Hive, but when I stop to think about Galaxy 2, it's almost as if the galaxies just mix and melt in my brain. We got another Freeze Flame Galaxy, another Sweet Sweet Galaxy, another Rolling Green Galaxy, reused bosses, I mean the list goes on and on. This isn't to say that Galaxy 2 doesn't have its memorable moments, but it's obvious that Galaxy 2 purely focused on the galaxies mechanically, while Galaxy 1 actually went through the effort of incorporating all these different and original elements to add to its foundation. What I'm basically trying to say is that Galaxy 1 feels like this great space adventure, while Galaxy 2 just feels like a fun obstacle course. Now there's one huge element that Galaxy 2 contains that the original doesn't, and that is the green stars. These start to appear once you make it to the post game, and I honestly really like the idea behind the green stars. It gives you a chance to revisit the galaxies, explore more of them, and tackle a harder challenge. Furthermore, I think having the perfect run as the final galaxy is an absolutely genius idea for kind of wrapping up the game. I truly believe that while it can be a lot of work to collect every single star, something like the perfect run does, in theory, make the little grind worth it. But my only issue here is the fact that a lot of the green stars do not make you explore other parts of the galaxies, and a lot of green stars don't present a harder or more in-depth challenge, but rather a very shallow one. If you look at a game like Super Mario Odyssey, you will see that a lot of the moons are very intentional. For example, there's one moon in the Metro Kingdom in which you have to go through an entire sewer so that you can activate this power plant. This is an example of an intentional moon, yet in the same kingdom, there will just be a random moon that is completely out in the open, and these are the type of moons that are completely unintentional and unengaging. They really don't serve much of a purpose other than the fact that it adds to your total moon counter, and I think this is a problem. While Galaxy 2 is much better about this in comparison to Odyssey, I can't help but lower my appreciation for the green stars as half of them give the same feeling those unintentional moons in Odyssey give me. So if I were to fix Super Mario Galaxy 2, here is what I would do. First and foremost, I would actually make the game a sequel to the first one. If they were already going to go as far as having a game in which there were so many new ideas that they needed another one as opposed to just DLC, then they should have just gone the extra mile on all the other elements that made Galaxy 1 good, as opposed to just the gameplay, soundtrack, and mechanics. Second of all, I would much rather prefer less content if it means that the content is higher quality, but in the case of Galaxy 2, I feel as if there are too many instances in which the quantity is valued over the quality which is most evident with the green stars. I mean, there's this random ass star in Hytale Falls Galaxy, this random ass star in Puzzle Playing Galaxy, this random ass star in Spin Dig Galaxy, this random ass star in Boo Moon Galaxy. I mean, I could go on and on about all the random forgettable green stars. And sure, there are definitely stars that are forgettable within the first game. I'm not denying that, but a lot of Galaxy 2 is, in my opinion, more forgettable than the first because of stuff like this. And finally, they could have at least added Yoshi into Galaxy 2. I mean, be fucking for real.